Today, we're going to play the final game of our second season at Southampton. And we have a very small outside chance of qualifying for the Champions League. Yeah, the second half of the season, it's gone pretty well. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. And let's get into this final game. Come on. Hello and welcome back to the Southampton save. Episode number seven today. It's the save where... We've got our director of football, Gary Megson, doing all of our transfer business. And he's only able to sign players who are under 21 or 21 and under, actually. So far in the save, it's been going pretty well, actually. First season, mid-table, meh. Second season, last episode, we got up to the January deadline day. And we made our aim for the season to be Europe. Whether that was the Europa League or whether that was, if a, bit, if a push, we could get ourselves into Champions League. And well, as I mentioned in the intro... We've got a chance. It's only a slim chance, but we've got a chance. Let me show you in the save here by going to this screen and showing you with one game to go, we are two points off the Champions League spot, the fourth place Champions League spot where Manchester United currently are. We played Chelsea last game of the season. If we win and United draw, because our goal difference is better, we will be in the Champions League next year. Now, it is it is an outside shot, but I thought we'd do it as a live com just because there's a very faint chance that we could do this. I'm going to get you caught up completely, caught up to date with the save by showing you all of the, the results, show you all of the on the goings on, how the team has been performing. And we're going to play this last game, this live com here against Chelsea and find out if we can do it at the end of season number two. Then on from there, we'll go into the January, oh, sorry, the summer transfer window. We'll see who we can buy as we move through the season three. Sound good? That sounds good to me. Um, yeah. Before we do jump into the save properly, I just want to say a quick thank you for everybody who is still here watching this series. So many of you enjoying it and thank you so much for that. It really, really is appreciated. I just want to say as well, sorry for the slightly longer gaps in between episodes. As a lot of you will be aware, this isn't my job and I've got other things going on outside of YouTube videos and sometimes those things get in the way. I'm sorry for that. I will do my best to keep these Southampton videos coming out as thick and as fast as I possibly can. So thank you for still being along on the journey with me. I really do appreciate it. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing. It's free. It helps me out. It makes me feel good about myself. So thank you for that. Also, leave a like on the video. We had a like target of a thousand for the last video. You were just off it when I was thinking about whether I could record another video in the week. Um, so we just missed it. But you know what? Let's try it again this week. If you hit a thousand likes on this video, I'll make sure that we get a second video out for the week and it keeps the save ticking along. Let's have that as a target. Let's get into this video then. Or let's get into the rest of this season that we've played. It's good. I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to showing you it. Let's get back into it. So here we are then at the end of the season. One game away from the end of the season. And we have played 37 and we find ourselves in fifth. We've qualified for the Europa League 2 or the Conference League, I should say. We haven't yet qualified for the Europa League, but we're in the in a prime spot. Two points clear of Spurs and then a fair few, was it? I mean, 13 points clear of seventh. So we're at least going to finish in the top seven here. Pretty good as far as the season goes. We've won 19, drawn 11, only lost seven. That's comparable to United. One more than Chelsea. Then you've got Liverpool and City towards the top. City are the champions again, 93 points from them. We've got Barnsley going down, Palace going down, and then probably Burnley on the last day are also going to join them unless there's a miracle and they score a whole load of goals on that final day. Probably not going to happen. Let me show you then the results and some of our standout performers for the rest of this season. I had a lot of fun playing through these games because, well, as you can see there, because our form was so good. It goes from Liverpool here in the first game after the deadline day, which you'll remember back to the end of last episode where we ended up signing Ridvan as our, well, as our right, well, he's going to be a left back, but I've been retraining him to play inverted winger on or inverted wing back on the right hand side he was signed for massive money 27 million pounds he's played a fair few games and he's now makeshift on this hand on this right hand side or awkward now he's actually moved up since i last had a look and um he's been quite good however that was the end of last episode since then we lost the first game to liverpool not going to be surprised by that at anfield as well they were really good they beat us 4-1 but then look we went on a great run of form. i see if you can spot a few of these things as well. We beat Wolves 3-1 in the FA Cup. We beat Everton with Benoit Badiashile scoring his first of this second half of the season. Have a look at how many goals he gets as I go through these results. What a superstar at left-sided centre-back he has been. Badiashile heading in corners from James Ward-Prowse and set pieces has been a real feature of our game this second half of this season. And he has scored so many goals, as has actually Stuart Armstrong, who's got plenty. He got a hat-trick in this game. And then... 
This is maybe my, my main talking point of the second half of this season. Olivier Katenge scored his first goal of, well, of this. Well, I mean, I think I showed you actually. He scored a goal earlier in the season. He scored against West Ham. And I decided I was going to try and play him a bit more because somebody said it in a comment, actually. And if Tom can find that comment, he's going to put it on the screen right now. And said, play the Swedish wonder kid 17 year old. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I probably should, shouldn't I? Because I talked about not having enough strikers. Look at Kitenge. He's 17. He's six foot one. He's got good acceleration. He's going to have hopefully some better pace. He's got great first touch. He's got okay finishing. He's going to be a superstar. And when I started playing him, he started scoring goals. He scored a goal in this 4-4 with Fulham. And then, I mean, I was trying to be a bit sporadic. It got towards the end of the season. You will see that I can't keep him out of the team at the moment. He's in fantastic form. He, uh, he's he been playing in a few of these games. So just keep an eye out for him. Martinez as well has been scoring goals up front. We beat Spurs 3-0, which was unbelievable here. Look, drew to Manchester United before that. We went out of the FA Cup here to Everton. It was Stuart Armstrong who scored, but a late goal from Gibson from Everton. We were out in the FA Cup, but I was okay with that because I thought the league is the main thing here, isn't it? Then we went on a lovely run. We scored four in three games in a row. Badi Ashile scoring. Badi Ashile scoring twice here. Badi Ashile scoring in the next game against Arsenal. A 4-0 win, by the way, against Arsenal. I've gone back. I stopped using the five at the back or the three centre-backs. I'm using the... Well, I'll show you here. I'm using this. The 4-1-3-2 again. Mainly just using the home version of it and using it away from home as well. And it's been so good. Have a look at Kitenge. I know it's a bit of a spoiler, but eight goals in 10 games for our 17 year old striker he's so good let me go back to these results and finish this off for you have a look look we lost to city again it was pretty that's something's gonna happen isn't it predictable beat leicester 3-0 buddy ashile scored we beat west ham 2-1 buddy ashile scored and then a late winner bit lucky that one drew to brighton but then this is it look the last two games the previous two games a 5-0 win against wolves kitenge got a hat trick 17 remember came through our youth intake Shea Adams and Stuart Armstrong scored and then the final game well our most recent game 5-1 against Burnley Kitenge scored twice again he is electric he's on fire and I think we're going to build everything around him at this stage because he he's shown and there's this is a thing with FM sometimes he's shown he can actually score you can have the best striker with the best attributes then if they don't score they're no good this guy scores goals and I'm excited to see where we can take him so as I mentioned then, we've actually moved back to the 4-1-3-2 system that we used towards the start of the season, which was pretty effective. And then we talked about maybe going to the back three because of the extra centre-backs we've got and we've got really good wing-backs. It, it wasn't quite working for me, it didn't seem, in the matches. So I've gone back to the 4-1-3-2, mainly sticking with the home version. And it's brought it's brought us to life, really. We've been really, really good. The main stars, Badi Yashile at the back. He's injured at the moment, so he's going to miss today's game. But... 13 goals in 34 games. He is a beast in the air. Six foot four, 18 jumping reach. That left hand side of defense. He's got 10 league goals. I actually think he's probably on our top goal scoring list. I mean, look at Chelsea's goal scorers. There is Lukaku and Immobile with 36 and 33. That is mental. But is Badi Ashile going to be on our top goal scoring list somewhere here? Uh, not quite, because Stuart Armstrong's on there with 13. He's not far off, look. One of the top goal scorers in the league from centre back. And he only joined. Did he join in January or was it at the start of the season? I can't remember right now. He's definitely been a star though. If I show you Ridvan Yilmaz and Dedic between them, actually, I want to show you. Can I show you the player of the month? Is there a way to show you that? Yeah, young player of the month here. I just wanted to show you how many times our players are winning young player of the month. Dedic won it in April. You, you got to look at our players on here. Look, we got a clean sweep in April of Dedic, Johnny and Keiki in the Young Player of the Month. Ugarte won it before that. Dedic won it again before that. Badia Shile and Johnny, another clean sweep from us. If you look at even Badia Shile was in there in January. We had Badia Shile and Dedic in there in October. Martinez, Livermento, Ugarte, another clean sweep in September. Because we've got so many young players, basically our whole team at this stage now, well, most of them anyway, we're getting the Young Player of the Month award most these, most weeks. Shows how well Dedic has been playing. And then Ridvan, I've been trying to slot him into our defence because he's really good, but is very left-footed and we play with inverted wing backs. So I've been training him here. He's now up to awkward and he's doing okay. Hopefully that will improve a little bit and we can see that his star rating isn't going to be too effective here. Um, but he's still been playing quite well. 7.01, so we can't really complain too much. The rest of the team, this has been our main four in the midfield. Johnny, Ward-Prowse, Armstrong, Ugarte. Have a look at some of their ratings, their stats down here. Look, you can see that they've been playing most of the games. 15 goals from Stuart Armstrong. To think we almost sold him in January. 
He's been really good. He scored a hat trick in one of the games I showed you. 15 goals is really, really good. And then up front, Shea Adams has got 21 again. A really good FM22 striker. All in, really. 21 goals from him. I'll go to the bench as well. Martinez has got 15 goals, which is not bad in itself, is it, in 34 games? But the young, the wonder boy, Olivier Katenge, with eight goals in eight games. Eight starts, I think. It's actually just eight games in the league. He's got eight goals, three assists, two play the matches. I'm hoping that he's going to go on to big, big things. I mean, it answers our question. We were talking about having no backup strikers because we sold Armstrong. Now we've got a Kitenge. We, he's the perfect backup striker. So much so that he's probably not a backup striker anymore. We need to play him. If I show you some of the other players here too, look, you can see some of their stats, how they've been getting on. See who's been playing the matches. See who's not been playing the matches. A couple of things to mention too. Theo Walcott is retiring at the end of the season. Nathan Redmond is leaving. He's going to Young Boys. And then a big one here, Diallo, who... He's a really good FM player, but I don't like using a ball-winning midfielder. So he just didn't really fit. He's going to Newcastle for £29 million. I don't think it will show you on there. £29 million, though, they are paying for him. He will join in July. So we're going to have a nice bit of extra money coming in for the, uh, the summer window, too, for Gary to go and spend. So look out for that in probably next episode. But that is how the team's been doing. I'm very happy with how we've done this season out in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup, out in the, where do we go? Second round of the Carabao Cup to Fulham. That's the Cups. That's the league. I guess the last thing to do is get ourselves up to this Chelsea game and play it. See if we can qualify for the Champions League. Okay, so the team will be as follows then for this game. One big change from the side that I just showed you, and that was the injured Badi Ashile will drop out, and I've brought Salisu in for him. The rest of the team, Forster, Rid Van Keiki, Salisu, Dedic, Johnny, Ward, Prowse, Armstrong, Ugarte, Kitenge. I'm going to start him up front. I know that he's actually, at the moment, he's not as good as Martinez in terms of his attributes, but the more you play these young players, hopefully the better they're going to be. He's got great potential. And the goal-scoring form he's in. He got a brace in his last game. He got a hat-trick in the game before that. I feel like we have to play him, don't we? So we're going to play him. Martinez will be on the bench if we need him. Kudos on the bench too is a good option too in terms of attacking players. Great against Liverpool, by the way, in real life, wasn't he? Playing mainly pretty much as a striker. We're going to continue with Ridvan as our right wing-back, keeping Liveramento out of the team, who's really good himself. But we've got great wing-backs. And now they can kind of both play on both sides. Kyle Walker-Peters also dropping out. It's Chelsea. It's not going to be easy. We're going to keep an eye on the Manchester United game. They're at home to Wolves. So, it, I mean, I didn't mention that before because it is a banker, really, for them. They should win it. But if they do something silly and drop points to them, I'm hoping we'll be in a position to take their Champions League place. We'll keep the latest scores up. In fact, I'll move them so that they are right here. It is Manchester United at home to Wolves that we're looking out for. As Chelsea are on the attack, first of all, they've headed over. Leave rubbish. Fraser Forster. We might need to get a goalkeeper. Although we did get the uh, the Brazilian goalkeeper, didn't we? Go on, James. James Will Prowse puts his free kick wide of the post there. I'm thinking about summer transfers already because it's really, it's really fun save to play. The way that you are just... I don't know what we're going to do. And I can't really influence what we're going to do as well. A couple of people were asking me, you know, do you get to be part of the recruitment meetings? Or can you influence it in any way? I've been really trying not to. I want Gary to do what he wants to do. In terms of who he brings in, who he sells. That's why Stuart Armstrong stayed. Because I could have transfer listed him and tried to force him out. I decided not to. He stayed and he's been brilliant. Go on, Kitenge. Oh, imagine that from the 17-year-old. He went for the lob against Mendy. Mendy saved it. Here he is, look, Kitenge. He's not particularly quick yet. I think it's 11 pace, 14 acceleration. But he looks like he knows where the goal is. Long ball forward from Chelsea. Here's Ugarte. I, I, I really like this Southampton team now. I'm really enjoying... Go I mean... Surely that's outside the box. That is a mental tackle that Antonio Rudiger has just made there. There was no reason to do that. Imagine we get a penalty here. I think it's going to be a free kick. It looks outside, right? Michael Oliver is going to check it. Please do us a favor. No penalty. Okay, that's probably fair. Uh, we didn't even get the highlight of James Will Prowse taking it. So obviously he didn't do very well with it. Let me encourage them. I've not seen the latest scores there. How are we looking? It's still nil-nil. Now, let me pause it. With it being a draw in both at the moment, if we were to take the lead, we I think we would go above them, wouldn't we? Just good to know that. We've got a corner. We could even take the lead right now. Ward Prowse in towards Salisu. That's where Badia Shile has been brilliant for us. Johnny can cross it from here. Ugarte. Ward Prowse should be a real chance. Goal. We lead against Chelsea. Lovely bit of football. Ward Prowse had the goal gaping from really and we've taken the lead let's now have a look at that league table and i think we might be in the champions league places as we approach half time here we are hoping that wolves can do us a favor lovely little pass that from ugarte and he just slots it here ward prowse 
Are we now in the Champions League places? When this updates, we should go to 71 points, right? It hasn't updated yet. That should be the case, though. It wasn't very live, that live league table, was it? Don't spoil it, Havertz. Good save. Well done, Fraser Forster. Bit fumbly, but he kept it out, didn't he? And it's going to be a corner to Chelsea. There we go. We've got it at the bottom left. Look, Southampton are now in the Champions League space places. 71 points, which means Manchester United are still drawing. They've got a free kick here, Chelsea, now. It's going to be taken by Rhys James. Please don't score. Uh, leave rubbish, Fraser. Leave rubbish. Right, let's get us to half time. Nobody panic. I'm, I'm not panicking. We're in the Champions League spots. It's nil-nil still in the United Wolves game. I dread to think if that start if that stays nil-nil and we get towards the end of this game and we're still winning. I dread to think my how my nerves are going to be. Chance for Salisu. He's at the post. I was off the line, in fact, by Jorginho. The set piece method almost working again. All right, let me change this back to the uh, the latest scores. Then still nil-nil at Old Trafford. Oh, Luke Shaw has scored. It's 1-0 to United. That means we drop back down to fifth, doesn't it? No. Come on, Wolves. We need Wolves now to do us a big favor. They held out to the 54th minute. By the way, Wolves, I think, are like, they're not doing great. They are, they're down in 16th. So it was a big ask for them to get anything here. We've so far done our job. I'm going to do a change now because we've got some tired players and some players not playing particularly well. Let's do... Katenge hasn't really pulled up too many trees today, did has he? We had that one chance that we saw that lobby went for. Let's just swap him out. It's 2-0 United. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's been a better live com than the last episode's live com. That 0-0. But not much better. It would have been much better if we'd had that chance of Champions League going into the final few minutes. But United had to spoil it, didn't they? It was Luke Shaw and Tuan Zebi who have scored their goals as well. It's a real shame, but... <sighs> oh, well. Here's come Chelsea with Werner. Oh, it's going to bounce through to Imo. It's 1-1 anyway. It, it doesn't matter. It's 1-1 anyway. It doesn't matter what's happening at Old Trafford because Chiro Mobile has got something like his 68th goal of the season or something. It's a good finish from him. It's a bit unlucky the way it bounces through here, actually. I think it's a tackle on Werner by Dedic. Yeah, and it bounces through to him. He hits it first time. 1-1 with five minutes to go. That'll probably see us through to the end now, won't it? Do you know what? It's a good result. It shows how good we are. It's a good result, but it does mean... At the end of this season, we finish on 69 points and we finish fifth. It's been a good season. We're going to go into the Europa League for next year. Next year, we're going to get Champions League, aren't we? Surely. Next episode, we're going to find out who Gary goes and signs. Can we do it again next year? I, 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 we're in a good place. That's a good season. Let's build on it next year. Thank you so much for watching today. If you want to get your name at the end of the video, like these guys here, please do go and support over on Patreon if you want to. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Remember, 1,000 likes is the target. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.